Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another film. I'm being distracted by the beech leaves on the edge of the woodland there. The sun's just risen from behind the hillside, and they look beautiful against the dark background with the light coming through the orange leaves there. They don't make for a great photograph in this instance, but it's just so nice to see. Right, the purpose of today's video was going to be a little bit of a tutorial, but typically, when I left the van this morning, my, my attention was drawn to um, a scene, an image that was just too good to miss. The light was ever so fleeting and I had to just grab it while I could. It's not really in keeping with the theme of today's video, but I wanted to share that moment with you. So I'm going to pass you back 20 minutes, uh, show you the shot being taken, show you the shot, and then I will speak to you in just a second to explain a little bit more about today's video. Well, good morning, everybody. I've just finished taking uh, a shot already this morning, and I've literally walked from the van 20 yards behind me there, just parked up, and being present and, and mindful from the outset has enabled me to see um, what I think is going to be a really nice, um, simple image. The, um, I think there's, yes, they are sycamore trees just beyond this wall here, Look on the left hand sides of the main stems, the sunlight that's just coming up over the hill to the left there is just catching the sides of the trees and the trees have got this lovely separation between them and then you've got uh, a nice old stone wall with, mossy t with a mossy top that's also catching the light. And crucially for this shot is that the woodland um, is, is behind the trees, is in deep shade, so you've got this lovely contrast between the trunks and the dark uh, woodland beyond, and it makes for a nice, interesting, almost abstract scene. And uh, literally, like I say, just walking from the van, and it, it, it caught my eye, I couldn't, I couldn't really fail to miss it. Um, and I'd like to think that, that most people who were slowing down and being considerate with the photography uh, are, are learning to to have that approach to the photography would start to see things like this and not just walk straight past it. Um, it is a little focus stack that I've done. Um, the lens I'm using is my 160mm lens. That's about one, I don't know, 130, something like that, and a full frame camera. And I'd, I've done a stack at f16, um, just focusing on the first tree, the middle tree, and the back tree, just to ensure that they're all nice and sharp. I've grossly underexposed the shot by about one and a half stops. Yeah, one and a half stops, just to make sure that those, um, that the side lighting on the trees doesn't burn out and I really capture the mood of the darkness beyond. So I'll put that image on now. of signs of spring for sure all this to the to the left of me here is fresh bluebell growth this woodland gets full of bluebells later in the season an absolute sea of blue but as you can see the woodland's quite cluttered and scrubby so it's not the easiest place to photograph where the broader bluebell woodland scene is concerned which brings me on to um, the theme of today's video now I often have a, a little logo on my thumbnails called uh, a little red thumbnail, a little red badge and it's got learn to see on it. And learn to see doesn't just mean learning to see the images but it also means learning to see the problem areas within the images and that's what I'm going to try and demonstrate today. I'm going to take some images, um, be nice to get three but we'll see how it goes. Um, but I'm going to take them with the problems um, that I normally remove um, as part of my composition distractions, bad light, um, just basically things that, that, that devalue the final frame that I would normally just automatically correct. Uh, it's not going to be easy because I, I, I've been doing photography for such a long time now that, that I automatically exclude these problems. So to put them in is going to be quite a challenge, but hopefully it'll be a good, um, a good lesson to, to, um, to put across as, as to how I remove these problems. Now, the real 
thing with today is that I'm going to show those images with all those problems and I'm not going to correct them in today's video. I'm going to save that for the next video so it'll give you time to reflect on the images and see if you can spot the problem areas. In the next video that I put out, I will show the corrected versions, but not only show the corrected versions, I will show you um, me back here taking those corrected versions so you can see it uh, as, as it was done in the field. So hopefully I can find some images that will work and, uh, and this will be a successful tutorial video rather than just me walking around taking what I consider to be really nice, lovely images of nature. So I will see you in just a second. So if you watch the channel regularly, you'll know that most uh, of what I photograph is, is largely unplanned. Uh, it's not the way that it's always been. Often I used to go out with exactly a plan in mind and come away disappointed because the light didn't do as I wanted it to or the conditions weren't as I had hoped. But today I just tend to go out and just, just wander around and just, just pick up whatever the day presents me with. And just, just walking through here now, um, there's a little spruce over there with some backlit pine needles. Um, broadleaf tree there with some nice moss on one side that's just catching the light. A little trickling stream in front of me which incidentally I need to cross and uh, hopefully I can do that without getting my feet wet. But it's just being present and just, just taking in your surroundings and I've said it so many times just to slow down and just look. Often, if you stop for five, 10 minutes, it's surprising what you'll find. Now, I do shoot a lot of woodland floor images and I've realized the reason for that is because often when I'm walking, I'm, I'm paying attention to where I'm putting my feet. I don't want to, don't want to stand on anything that's uh, botanically important and I certainly don't want to trip over anything. So I am spending a lot of time looking down and that's probably why I photograph so many woodland floor images. But today I am trying to be more conscious about looking up and looking around it is, it is something that I often preach and uh, it certainly helps to pick up different images other than keep shooting the same things down on the floor as nice as they are so I need to get across this stream now and uh, hopefully I will find something worthwhile pretty soon the things that I've just pointed out the spruce and the, the moss on the side of the, uh, the broadleaf tree they're not particularly um, great photographs but just just again nice to see and it's things like that that I'm watching for and and just watching for them when they just sort of they, they raise the, the level of the bar that little bit higher and they become worthy of a photograph so let's keep our fingers crossed In one of my recent videos, someone commented very kindly that I could take as many woodland floor images as I liked and they wouldn't get bored. So this one uh, is just for you. Hopefully I don't find just these today, but this one proves the point really well. So I'm going to kick today off with, the, with uh, this, this demonstration with this, with this one right here. And it's a sycamore leaf down on the floor. And um, just here on, on my right hand side, You've got uh, like a, a cluster of, I was going to say bracken, is it bracken? It's actually not, it's, uh, it's one of the buckler ferns and one of the fern fronds has, has landed on the sycamore leaf and made a nice composition. The rain has compacted the, the, the fern frond onto the leaf so it's sandwiched really tightly against it and it makes for a nice um, easy um, composition but uh, I'm going to photograph it incorrectly uh, so you can see what difference um, a few minor tweaks can make to the composition. Right, so the first shot is lined up, camera in the typical downward position to get the sense plane nice and flat. That's not going to be one of the criti cri um, criticisms of, of this shot today. Um, it's nothing to do with whether I should or shouldn't have a polarizer on. It's nothing to do with light. Um, it's, it's not aperture shutter speed, ISO values. It's literally the composition uh, value. Now, I've, I've struggled 
to take this as badly as I can. Um, but uh, it is, as far as I'm concerned, pretty bad. Um, but I have gone to the lengths of angling the sycamore leaf ever so slightly off to one side just to just to make the composition a little bit nicer. So I will take this now and uh, put it on and hopefully, fingers crossed, you can all quite easily see um, the issues with the scene and, and maybe have some idea, some stab at thinking how it could be improved. And then, like I say, I will, once I put that on, I will take the next shot with a much better version, but you'll have to wait till the next video to see that. So the rain's come in and the forecast has changed. It's not looking fantastic for the next one, possibly even two hours. So I don't know how heavy the rain's gonna come, but I'm gonna head into the pine woodland because that will give me a little bit of extra time before the, the water starts dripping through the trees and onto me. And hopefully I can find another image before uh, I need to retreat. Based on the weather forecast this morning, I didn't bring an umbrella and uh, the jacket that I'm wearing um, is only waterproof to a point, it's sort of water resistant um, and I didn't mean to pick up my waterproof as I dashed out the door this morning, completely forgot it, so unprepared for this um, unexpected weather. So like I say, I'll get in there now and see if I can find anything in this relative shelter compared to what's, uh, what's out there. So just literally walking in from the wood and uh, I know full well that um, pine woods are not the easiest places to photograph uh, in any situation. There's a lot of monotony, um, just typically straight trunks spaced um, evenly uh, through, through the woodland, um, very, very uniform structure and also the vegetation is, is very repetitive as well. But um, as luck would have it, fallen trunk here um, caught my eyes. I walked through. Um, just on the top here, you've got some feeding remains from uh, from the grey squirrel, who's been sat uh, nibbling the pine cones and discarding them on the floor. There's one um, left over. Another cluster on that end of the log as well. But um, what really caught my eye was the the patterns on the trunk. Very very beautiful patterns indeed. And um, it's that that I'm going to photograph now. Now, like last time. I'm going to photograph it as badly as I can um, with not much attention to the composition, the detail, the lighting, etc. Uh, and have that mindset of grab a picture and go and then I'll put that, that, uh, that frame on. So I'll line that up now as best I can or I should say as worst that I can and, uh, and I'll, just, I'll just show you what I've got. So here is my shot lined up. Um, it's a little bit burnt out on the top but um, you can see the log and its markings, if I just, just dial the aperture down a bit, you can see there that I've incorporated the, the feeding remains um, of the squirrel and I've also got the nice patterning, um, I'll brighten that up now so you can see the patterning on the log as well and uh, I feel that I've got plenty of detail in there, I go in, it's nice and sharp, uh, pretty much sharp there and um, I'm going to use uh, probably F16. Um, have I gone the right way? F19. F16 to take this shot so I get um, sharpness as much as possible throughout. So I'll take that now. That's a little bit dark, so I'll brighten it up. I um, want to see all the log, of course. That's better. Um, let's just have a replay of that. And, uh, yeah, let's be fair. I mean, what I could do is I could blend 
both of those exposures together so that I deal with um, the light on the top and I can get it correctly there and then use that second image to blend in the, uh, the rest of the, the image that's otherwise dark. So I will put that shot on now. So it's just so easy to walk past a potentially great image. I've walked past this tree dozens of times and never really given it the time of day. And it's only when I've set the little video camera up there to just show a nice walkthrough of the woodland um, that I noticed it because it was in the frame. The route that I took, which was actually the true route that I took, um, I was watching um, where I was putting my feet. I didn't want to stand on anything important. You know, there's new bluebells coming up here and there, but to be fair, the majority of what's on the floor here is sycamore seedlings. But I was still watching where I was walking, and in doing that, um, I would have missed this. And uh, it's not, let's say, the most fantastic subject, but it's certainly getting there when you look at it in contrast to the pine woods behind. It's that sort of thing, and it stands out nice bright green against the dark. Um, almost moody background but you've really got to keep your eye out for stuff like this it's so easy to miss and especially like I say if you're walking with your eyes down watching where you're going you miss all sorts of things some things are just almost impossible to not photograph but I'm going to do my best I'm not going to photograph this one because I just feel it's a bit samey than what I've done before I'll just show you though because it's a remarkable opportunity and I think ordinarily I would encourage anybody to take it. So just down here, look at that little frond just there. Sorry, just stabilise that. So this frond here has actually come detached from that there and it's stuck to the trunk. But uh, you go in close. Uh, stabilise that, move that out of the way, sharpen it up. You know, what a lovely, lovely shot that is on its own. Just not quite sharp. When I get in close, I lose the focus a little bit. But just a really simple, beautiful shot. Ordinarily, I'd put a polarizer on that, just the tops of the... Uh, the little leaflets there are just catching the light and it would it would make for a lovely image that really nice these things are everywhere um, and I'm seeing them all the time today because I've got my head down on the ground where I'm looking what I'm finding is that whilst I, I did say earlier to encourage looking up and around um, most of the interest uh, certainly at this time of year early spring is down at your feet and uh, that's where I seem to be finding most of the interest but uh, I'm going to leave that alone and uh, hopefully I'll find something something a little bit different which is what I'm holding out for now. I found another one but it's down on the floor again. Sometimes when I look I can't even find I can't even find it again and I'm petrified that I'm going to stand on it and I've moved the cam video camera well out the way so that um, that doesn't happen. I was originally thinking I'd put the video camera over the top of it, talk about it and look down but uh, just, it just isn't worth it. It's weird how they, they just disappear. They, they, one minute they're there and they, they really just, you can't, I mean I was walking along here and I just couldn't, couldn't miss it. And several times now whilst I've been thinking about whether I really should do another one down here. <laughs> um, I've looked for it and I, can't, I just can't find it, it's bizarre. But um, I can see it again now. And it's definitely worth doing. I, I took two shots with my phone, um, 
one with a composition that um, the, 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 the wrong composition, let's say, that I'm going to do first, and then I, I did the, you know, the, the, the variation of it, and the difference is massive. So I can't, I can't not do it um, because it's so illustrative of, of what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say here. So, without further ado, I'll get the camera out and uh, do this one on the floor again. So I'm wondering, with this view that you've got here, whether you can see anything that catches your eye um, that you might have seen as you walked over. And I don't feel I'm being unfair here because the distance um, the camera is to the subject is probably uh, somewhat closer than what my viewpoint is as I walked over it. And the fact that I'm, I'm kneeling right in front of it hopefully will give it away. Um, there's obviously a lot, lots going on in this general area, but uh, to my mind, there's one thing that, that stands out, certainly now whilst I'm staring at it, like I say, if I look away and look back and stand at a distance, it just, just disappears and it's, it can be quite difficult to find. But within this frame shot that you see, it's pretty obvious once I point it out, and it's this, this oak leaf here. I'm desperately not going to touch it. Um, if you look, just here there's two holes and within those holes there's two little little um, spikes of mosses peeping through those holes just perfectly um, just just making a lovely lovely composition and uh, the question is how do you photograph something like this so I'm going to photograph it like I said I'm going to photograph it incorrectly now and um, Hopefully when you see the incorrect results, you'll be able to determine what I could do to improve it. So I'll take that now. So this is the composition that uh, I've set it up on quickly. Um, obviously you can see that the, uh, the moss is there peeping through nice and clearly. And not a lot else to say really, I'll show you the aperture. So that's 5.6, 23rd second at 100 ISO. So there are things to consider um, overall with this shot um, when I finally take it um, but yeah I don't want to give too much away so I will just quickly show you the camera angle so the subject is here in relation to the camera the histogram is showing that it's correctly exposed so we'll take that and I'll put that on now. Well, that's it from me for today. Um, I've been so engrossed in doing that shot and setting everything up that I've just realized that whilst I've been doing that, the camera bag's in a gap in the canopy and it's pouring down and everything's absolutely wet through. So, time to dry that off and uh, head off to the van, get myself a nice warm brew, which I feel like I've, I've earned today. It's not been um, the warmest of days, let's say, and uh, the forecast certainly isn't what they promised, and uh, this rain now feels like it's set in for the day. I hope you found this little segment interesting um, and that I've, I've illustrated some images that, that allow you to go away, consider and um, reflect on before the next video where I'll show you the, um, the, re the improved versions of those. Now what I intend to do is uh, on my Facebook page Simon Booth Photography um, I will post um, the images from today, the incorrect ones um, and hopefully get a little bit of a discussion going there as to what, um, what the issues might be and how they can be resolved. So I will leave it there and say thank you all so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Uh, so until then, bye for now. Mm -hmm.